Like nearly all applications, Flash Professional sports an application menu. In this lesson, we'll have an overview of the menu bar and the commands within it. So the menu bar will appear at the very top of the application window, and it has all of these different menu commands in here. So I'm going to point out within each of these some of the more important things you'll need to know when working in Flash Professional CS6. Under File, we can create new documents, we can open documents, or close documents. We can also save or save as. We can save as a template. We can go through and import items to the stage or the library, and even open external libraries that are created in other Flash Professional documents. And we can also import video. We can export images selections and movies. The most important thing under here though is probably publish settings, publish preview, and the publish command. These allow us to choose from a number of different publish settings. So if we go in to our publish settings, you can see that we can select different profiles or create profiles. We can change the version of Flash Player or Air that we're targeting and even change the action script language version from one, two, or three. Then we can choose which types of actual items we want to publish. So we can choose the default, which is Flash, Swift. We can also choose to create an HTML wrapper for that or not. We can create projectors, which are standalone movies with the Flash player bundled in. We can export JPEG or ping images. So we have a few different options here. When we hit publish, that will employ the publish settings that we've already decided upon and actually publish those documents. If we're using Air, we can change our Air settings from here. And if we're developing things in ActionScript, we can change the specific ActionScript settings from right here. And then there's things such as the page setup, whether to print the current page or frame that we're on on the stage, and we can also exit the application through here as well. Within the edit menu, we have our undo or repeat. We have normal cut, copy, and paste commands here. We also have the ability to duplicate objects, select everything on the stage, or deselect everything on the stage. We have a find and replace command. A lot of commands that are targeting the actual timeline itself so things around frames and layers and motion. We can edit a variety of our symbols if we have symbols created. And one of the more important things here is that we're actually able to change all of our application preferences from the edit menu. So if we go into preferences, we can change general preferences, preferences that are targeting action script, and even things like Photoshop file importer or the Illustrator file importers. So there's all sorts of different settings in here that you'll want to have a look at. Under the view menu, we can say to go to specific scenes in our movie. We only have one scene in this one, so that's all that shows up here. We have zoom settings here. We can preview as outlines fast, anti-alias, anti-alias text, or full. And this determines how much actual fidelity we get when we're working in Flash Pro. So if I chose outlines, for example, we're only going to see the outlines here. If you're working on a really big project, it might make sense to turn that on if it's bogging your computer down. We can choose also whether to use the pasteboard or not. Pasteboard is the area outside of the stage that is pretty useful in order to do additional things, like scratch work and so forth. We can choose whether to view rulers or not, so I just turn them off right there. We can choose to show our grid or edit the grid. And the grid is basically an overlay. So if I toggle all my layers off, we can see the grid right there. We can also choose to show our guides or edit our guides or lock our guides. And guides are pulled down from the ruler in order to uh, help us line things up if we need them. 
and those can be turned on or off. And then we have snapping. So we can snap to a variety of different object types. We can snap a line, we can snap to grid, snap to guides, to pixels, or to objects. And we can also edit these snapping settings from this dialog right here. We then have the insert menu where we can insert a new symbol, a variety of different tween types, and tweening is basically what happens between keyframes within an animated sequence. So we can choose between tween types here. And we can also insert layers, layer folders, frames, keyframes, or blank keyframes within the timeline. Here we can also insert scenes. Scenes being a way to break the main timeline up into manageable pieces. We can choose to modify our document properties here. So if we open this dialog, we can choose the dimensions of the stage, the background color, frames per second, and so forth. We can also go down, if we have elements selected, we can convert them to symbols, convert them to bitmaps, or break them apart. And then we have specific commands for different types of objects. So commands for bitmaps, symbols, shapes, or combined objects. We have some other properties of the timeline that can be modified, such as layer properties, uh, keyframes, and so forth. Here we can also reverse frames or synchronize symbols. So there's some interesting and useful things in here. We have our transform menu, which of course transform, arrange, and align. All of these things can actually be accessed through panels as well, which makes them a little easier to use, I think, than through this modify menu. We can also group and ungroup objects from here. Next, we have settings that involve text, so choosing our font, size, style, and so forth. We can also check our spelling from here and change the way that fonts are embedded. This brings up the font embedding dialog to create our own custom font embeds. Under commands, we can manage our saved commands. We can run commands from here. And if we have commands such as these already in Flash Pro, we can simply just click on them and they will run for us. The control and debug menus are rather similar as they let us test and debug our Flash Professional movie or our Air movie. So going in here, we have some basic timeline controls that are also available within the timeline themselves as GUI elements. But here we can test our movie we can choose to test in Flash Professional or in the browser. If it's an Air project, we can test using the Air Debug Launcher on desktop or mobile, or even test on a device via USB. All we have to do is hit Test for that or Control Enter. Same thing with the Debug menu. We are able to debug using those very same options. Below here are a number of different commands that can be used when debugging our movie if we're using breakpoints and so forth. Breakpoints are a way of sort of pausing the execution of our code while the movie is playing so that we're able to introspect the file. We then have our window menu and the window menu controls all of the different panels that can actually be added or removed from the Flash Professional interface. And there's a lot of stuff in here. And finally we have our help menu which allows us to go to Flash Help. It allows us to access the Flash Support Center or the Flash Exchange where we can download extensions. We can manage the extensions from here. We can manage the Air SDK that we're using. So we can have multiple Air SDKs in Flash Professional CS6. We can also access the Adobe Online Forums, complete or update our Adobe ID profile, deactivate our product, or check for updates. So this has been a quick overview of the application menu and some of the more useful commands that you can find within this menu in Flash Professional CS6.